Now I've wanted to do a video like this for at least two weeks. I haven't had the time, but it's Sunday. I'm going to launch into it. Uh, I've already been practicing a little bit, as you can see, on exactly what I'm going to be telling you. Let me just clean that off because I want to make sure I get this right. Now, I'm going to begin with this evil, nasty... You see how he's got an evil face there? He's an angry, racist capitalist. He owns the majority of the money and wealth in the world. Uh, he wants to oppress all the lesser cultures and uh, spread his international financial control over the entire world. You know? um, <clears throat> now, if you think about it for one second, this guy's the king of the hill, yeah? He has control over all the multinational corporations, all the, all the power in terms of uh, financial control and so forth. If you were the king of the hill, and you ruled, had a despotic, sort of anonymous control over everything, uh, what would be the first thing, the most important thing to maintaining your control over the world? Get control of the youth, okay? When you're king of the hill, and you've got all these new generations getting born, you don't want them growing up into being fierce warriors that are going to drag you down from your throne. No, you want to keep them focused on things that are stupid and don't matter. What's the best way to get control of the youth? Education. Probably the best way. And so Mr. Evil Capitalist Moneybags, he gets burrows into the uh, school curriculums and, you know, makes his philosophical teachings and ideas of the world the, uh, the learning uh, curriculum of children. Children get taught what Mr. Big Moneybags wants them to get taught which for the most part is absolute rubbish. Uh, they pretty much get driven away from their nationality, from their own culture, from their own intrinsic sense of identity and pride. They're not allowed to have that from the beginning. That's a dangerous thing to international finance and capitalism. But there's another good way to get kids. It's uh, music and media. You see, music and media is an especially good way to get children these days. Kids listen to a lot of music, and they watch a lot of movies and, uh, what are they called, like uh, drama shows, DVD box sets and so forth. You see, music these days is made to seem as though it has different sorts of genres and you can choose what you're going to listen to and although it sounds different, it's generally all about the same thing. It's either about someone's girlfriend or boyfriend broke up with them and they're heartbroken, or it's about cocaine, fast cars and um, parties. And you see, through these influences, through anti-national, anti-patriotic education, and through ridiculous sort of nihilistic influences in these areas, music and media, he throws the majority of children into his first net. What is this first net? It is drugs, alcohol, and parties. Probably 90%, I would say of children fall for this kind of thing. 90% of children these days coming out of high schools or any sort of educational institution, if it's a public one, uh, what's most important to them are friendly, and so, uh, friendly associations. Uh, alcohol, maybe Instagram and Facebook relations, getting good looking pictures off of themselves, having a good time, smiling, my life's so great. Yeah, take drugs kids, go to parties, uh, travel the world, Go to different parties around in different clubs or beaches in Europe. Enjoy life, you know. Don't worry about the future and don't worry about your history. Your history is evil and genocidal. Just live it up now. And see, the majority of the kids fall for that because it's very appealing. There's no resistance against this kind of thing. There's no national resistance. He just says how it is and the kids fall straight in there. But he never gets everybody. He gets 90% of children in here, but what about the other 10%? There's a 10% who find out a little bit about him, who realise something isn't quite right. But he anticipates this. And so he creates all this evil fascist type thing. This kill the fascists. He creates a leadership or a political resistance against himself that actually does not cause him any harm 
It only harms the people who participate in it. It's very clever. And you see this net here is the, the anarcho-communist type uh, thing. This is the fake political resistance. Everyone who's like, yeah, we've got to bring down the system. We've got to bring down evil monetary capitalism. Yeah, they fall into this net. So they don't cause him any drama. They think they're fighting against him, but they're not. What they're actually doing, I'll explain to you now. Another 8%, I'd say, fall into that. 98% of kids are completely deluded and controlled. 90% are taking drugs, going to parties, posting Instagram photos, and just living life. The other 8% are falling into extreme left movements of anti-nationalism and uh, kill the fascist sentiments. But what about the other 2%? There's another 2% who don't fall for anything, who are free thinkers, who aren't interested in Instagram and drugs and parties and social relations with you know, excessive amounts of alcohol. They aren't interested in anarcho-communist clans and unbridled liberalism and so-called progressive uh, political sciences. No, they're just interested in the actual reality. They see what's happening all around them and they really don't like it. And so they tend to be patriots, nationalists, uh, right-wingers to some degree. And so how does Mr. Capitalist destroy these people if he can't get them in here and he can't get them in here through his propaganda? If, if these people are immune to all his propaganda, if it just hits this barrier and bang, comes back off, it doesn't work, how does he get them? How does he destroy them? These people are a threat. Simple. He uses these people to kill the fascist, kill the evil racist, destroy the free thinker. If you doubt me, then uh, ask yourself, why do all these socialist movements, communist organizations, uh, why are they always propped up by state funding? Mr. Capitalist sends them money. So they can f absorb a few more people and really generate some hatred against nationalistic or patriotic um, sentiments, you know, cultural identity sentiments. So they really become full of hate. So then they really can be used as a hammer to destroy the last morsels of free thought. You'll never see these people get state funding. If they form their own little sort of right-wing nationalist group or a patriot movement, they will never get a dollar from him. From no council, no form of government, nobody would be willing to give them any money. Because they'll have their reputations destroyed. They'll be absolutely ridiculed and slandered by the old faithful capitalist gang that believes they're actually fighting against capitalism. No, they're reactionary thugs. They're used to destroy the actual free thinkers. And Mr. Capitalist actually gives them money to do it. And they still don't realise what they're actually a part of. So if I go through that all again very quickly, Mr. Capitalist, in order to maintain his despotic financial control, get those angry eyes going again because he's an angry capitalist, in order for him to maintain his grip of financial control over everything, he needs 90% of the nation's youth taking drugs, partying, Excuse me. Posting uh, pictures on Instagram and just not really giving a shit about anything. And he successfully does that. He needs the other 8% that don't fall for that rubbish. Not always, anyway. They sometimes move in and out of this, especially today. But he needs these people as his fake political army who thinks that they're actually fighting against him but know what they're actually doing is always fighting the 2% of free thinkers. These people who are immune to all the bullshit who understand that patriotism, cultural identity, love, pride, spirit, honour, these are the only real defences against international finance.